Hey, Steve the Prima here. Today we're gonna to take a look at all these hand grinders. Uh, we're gonna talk about what makes a premium hand grinder different, how it uh, matches up against a lot of the electric grinders on the market, why you might wanna buy one, and how each of these brands I have in front of me compares. So if you are, have done some grinder shopping before, you've probably seen some of these out on the market. Hand grinders have made quite an impact on the grinder market in the past few years. Um, they've popped up all over the place. We have manufacturers from all over the world now. Um, and if you've never used one before, it might seem kind of strange that you might want, you know, a, a small hunk of aluminum instead of an electric appliance that sits on your countertop. Um, overall, uh, one of the really great benefits of a premium hand grinder is that if you spend $200, let's say, on a hand grinder, you are probably getting a little bit better value in terms of grind quality and construction than you would out of a similarly priced electric grinder. And that's mainly just because that $200 goes a little bit further in terms of materials, um, build quality, etc because that electric grinder has to worry about the electrics. It has to put a motor inside. It has to get tested and certified. And you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into manufacturing an electric grinder that adds to that cost. So in the end, sometimes those burr sets and the overall build quality doesn't quite match what you can get in a hand grinder. Now, if you don't mind grinding by hand, it is a manual physical effort, uh, that is great news for you. That means that you get a lot more value for your money. If you're not so keen on grinding, you know, manually grinding for 30 seconds at six in the morning before work, maybe you want an electric instead. That's totally fine. Um, what we do want to talk about though is some of the premium options that we have on the market. Uh, we at Prima have carried a selection of premium hand grinders for quite a few years now. We've tested quite a lot and we have a lot of things to say about them. Uh, overall, the brands that I have in front of me um, a lot of them are actually pretty similar, we feel, in overall grind quality. There's definitely little differences here and there, but if you were to ask us which one is our favorite, it's hard to pick because there isn't one that clearly stands out above the competition. A lot of them are fairly similar, you know, in kind of general terms. We might have one that we prefer for espresso or one that we prefer for packing up and going camping. Um, there, a lot of it comes down to just overall fit and finish the overall you know, weight and usability, personal comfort, you know, whether you prefer a handle like this Feld 2s or something like the Lido's, um, there's a lot of personal choices that come down to what makes that hand grinder the best for you. So I'm going to break down by brand each and every one of these grinders I have in front of me today, tell you a little bit what, about what makes them special, what maybe isn't our favorite part about them, and give you a great sense of how they all stack up against each other. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we're gonna start with Hario's hand grinders just to set sort of a baseline of what hand grinders have been up until a little bit more recently. Um, generally with hand grinders, uh, they were meant to be kind of compact and travel friendly and uh, more or less inexpensive. Both of these guys are under $100. They both also have ceramic conical burr sets inside and that at least these days is not quite as good. So we have um, a, an outer ceramic burr, an inner ceramic burr, and then we have these kind of clicky stepped dosing or er, um, adjustment mechanisms. And you know, until basically until uh, Orphan Espresso came out with uh, some of their first hand grinders, that was sort of the expectation. You know, Hario and Porlex and Kyocera and a few other places were making hand grinders very similar to this that were lightweight, fairly travel friendly, um, inexpensive and easy to use. And you know, they do fine, they do a fine job. Uh, you know, we still sell them today because yeah, if you don't have a huge budget and you're not trying to buy some kind of, you know, high end hand grinder, these do a pretty good job, uh, especially for how they're priced and you know, what they're intended for. Um, this is the Mini Slim Pro and this is the Skirton Pro. This guy holds about 40 to 50 gra uh, grams of beans in the upper um, 
hopper. This one's a little bit more like 50 to 60. They both have plastic lids that uh, snap into place. They both have removable um, cast metal handles. And again, yeah, they do a pretty good job. Um, they're not the best grind quality, again. Um, and you know, partly that's just because you have some plastic involved. And um, those ceramic burrs, they don't do a, a superb job of cutting the coffee beans. So you get some dust, you get some fines. They wobble a little bit as well while they're grinding, so it's not super even either. Um, just to give you a sense of what you're getting into, let me show you what it's like to grind with this Skirt and Pro. I'm actually gonna tighten my grind setting up a little bit uh, as if I were grinding for a single cup V60, so about 15 grams of beans. Uh, it is fairly easy to grind with these. And, oops, there's one. Uh, fairly easy to grind with these, but again, you have a little bit of burr wobble. It doesn't suit, feel uh, extremely stable. And I mean, not to, not to overstate the point, but yeah, they're more or less the, the budget model and you're getting what you pay for. So it's not a tremendous amount of effort to grind with a Skirtin Pro, but when you look at the grind quality, uh, the finer you go, the better your results will be, but you still see, you know, there's a couple of larger pieces mixed in here. It's not the most consistent grind quality. And that's fine, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an affordable grinder and it gives you reasonable results for the price. Now, as we move up the line, however, we're going to start to see much better grind quality. We're gonna see faster grinding. We're gonna see more easy grinding because uh, the bearings are better. There's more stable um, uh, drive mechanisms and all that. So these guys are a good baseline to understand what makes a premium hand grinder different. Let's move on to Orphan Espresso's Lido grinders. So Orphan Espresso's line of hand grinders currently includes these three Lido models. I have the Lido 3, the Lido E, and the Lido ET. All three of these grinders are basically the same internally. They all have the same 48 millimeter conical steel burr set. They all actually have the same overall grind range adjustment, and that is how far the burrs actually travel when you're making adjustments. The difference is the Lido 3 versus the E-Line, uh, it has a coarser uh, adjustment screw, more or less, a coarser thread pitch. Uh, and that means that small adjustments on the adjustment wheel uh, translate to larger movements of the burrs than the ET and the E do. Um, overall though, they are very much the same grinder. Um, you have uh, the same uh, cast aluminum parts, uh, plastic anti-static, uh, hopper and grinds catch. Um, you have uh, bronze bushings inside, very stable grind mechanisms. So one of the things that Orphan likes to do to demonstrate uh, their grinders is to um, you know, loosen up the grind adjustment a little bit and then just free spin the grind chamber to demonstrate, yeah, this is a very stable grinder. You couldn't do this uh, on something like one of the Hario grinders because the burrs have a little bit too much wobble in them and they'll basically kind of grind together and cause too much friction for it to be able to spin like that. Uh, overall, these are pretty fantastic hand grinders, but they are much larger than some of the competition these days. Um, the Lido grinders were intended to be really high quality um, manual grinders that are suitable for basically espresso to however coarse you need it. Um, and they are built with more or less, you know, a, a lifetime of use in mind. Um, it is very, very difficult to see one of these ever really failing, you know, you can probably imagine that the burrs need to be replaced at some point in their life, but um, with a little bit of, you know, good cleaning and care, they're gonna last a very long time. They are very, very high build quality. Um, adjusting any of these grinders is done exactly the same way. We have two rings here. The lower ring is basically the main adjustment. The middle ring is just sort of a locking ring. So what I might do is uh, I will loosen my grind uh, just by twisting to the, to, the, uh, to the left. And I can set this blue line um, wherever I need it. These two blue lines line up more or less as a reference point for approximately zero. Often the zero is a little bit tighter than that. Um, but you can use these markings as reference points for how many, uh, or basically how many settings you've turned, even though these are all stepless grinders. 
Um, for the Lido 3, a drip range is approximately one full revolution, sometimes a little bit finer, sometimes a little bit coarser, just depends on you know, where uh, or what size uh, batch you're brewing and uh, what kind of coffee you're using, what kind of dripper you're using. Uh, for a V60, I might actually take it one full revolution and then back it off a few uh, notches. And then I can just lock in with that fine ring. To demonstrate grinding with this, I've got 15 grams of beans here. Again, I'm at approximately a V60 setting. Very, very easy to grind with. Obviously, if you're grinding for espresso or Turkish coffee, or you, know, you prefer a fine grind for an AeroPress or something like that, the finer you go, the more resistance there will be and the more effort is needed. But overall, for this V60 grind setting, it is butter smooth. And that, again, is a testament to the build quality and the alignment of that drive shaft and system. It's very similar across all of the Lido grinders uh, in terms of grind, you know, ease of grind and grind quality. Uh, again, the main difference between the Lido 3 and the E and ET is just that the thread pitch on the E series is finer, and that's so you can make um, easier adjustments if you're using it particularly for espresso. So whereas my drip range is about one full turn on, uh, on a Lido 3, it might be closer to a turn and a half or even two turns on an E grinder. Uh, and again, that just depends on where you prefer to, uh, to actually grind and how large a batch you're doing. Um, but the espresso range on the three is maybe one to two notches or possibly up to four, depending. Uh, where, uh, but on the E-Series, you're talking more about six to ten notches. You have a little bit wider window to work with, so smaller adjustments here translate to much smaller, or translate to, you know, a little bit more ease of dialing in for espresso. Um, so in terms of what you actually get with these grinders, um, the Lido E, this one in the center here, obviously, it has a fixed handle. It does not fold like the Lido uh, 3 and the ET do. So for the folding handle, you just push up on the little button or you can pull up on the handle and then just rotate it inward and it will lock in place. These both come with uh, carrying, like neoprene carrying cases for storage. Uh, all three grinders come with tools for adjusting the screws as well as a small brush. Uh, the E in particular comes with this dosing funnel and a little rubber rest so you can set it on your table and have a more stable grinding surface. And then the dosing funnel is really handy because it screws right on top of your grinds catch and then you can tip your grinds into a portafilter much more cleanly. Um, these accessories are actually available uh, for purchase if you would like them. So, and they are compatible with all three Lido grinders. Um, you'll also notice that we have this silicone stopper plug on the ET and the three that can be purchased. It does fit the, the Lido E. It's a, not quite as, um, not quite as snug, but it does fit and cover uh, the hopper just to prevent you know, popcorn and beans spilling out, what have you. Um, now, one of the main downsides for these grinders is just that they're quite bulky. Um, they have a 70 gram capacity and that is almost excessive for what most people need. Generally, a hand grinder user is only looking to grind maybe up to 20 grams, sometimes up to 50 or so if they really want to use that as their main grinder. But, uh, often we see people are using these for travel. So 70 grams is, is quite a lot of coffee. Um, a, a smaller grinder might be preferable for most users. If you're comfortable with having the flexibility to be able to grind up to 70 grams of coffee, then Alito might be a great choice for you. Um, and again, we have that really stable grind quality or, or grinding mechanism and good grind quality coming out of the burrs. So it could very well be a full replacement grinder as your main grinder. Uh, again, as long as you're you're comfortable grinding by hand. So the overall weight, the size, the bulk of them is probably the biggest downside, but um, the grind quality more than makes up for that for a lot of people. So overall, these are really, really nice hand grinders. And these kind of set the standard for what a premium hand grinder should do. These came out at a time when there wasn't really a lot of competition for premium hand grinders and they really knocked it out of the park. So kudos to Orphan for basically setting us all up to have some awesome hand grinders today. Moving on to Knox hand grinders, I have here the Air Grind and the Feld 2. 
Um, Knock has been around for a little while and they probably made their name with the air grind in our opinion because this is a hand grinder with an excellent set of burrs inside designed specifically to pack into an AeroPress, uh, as the name might imply. So uh, sticking this grinder into an AeroPress uh, plunger, you can basically pack the two together and travel with them with a fairly nice compact setup. You do still have to figure out what to do with the handle, but you can take this little um, handle caddy rubber band and stretch it around the outside of the AeroPress if you like. Um, or just, you know, pack this separately. Um, so the air grind and the Feld 2 both have the same size burr set in them. They're actually the same exact burrs. They are 38 millimeter conical steel burrs that are coated um, with a, just a black um, special coating that will help uh, keep those burrs sharp for longer. So it helps their performance last a lot longer um, over their lifespan. Um, both of these are quite compact and fairly lightweight. Um, the air grind certainly is smaller and lighter than the Feld 2. Um, they're both made out of milled anodized aluminum. Um, so the, one of the benefits there is that the, both the grinders are sort of a unibody construction. So the milling inside acts as the overall sort of support system for the burr axis and bearings and, and all of that. So they are both fairly stable and you know, well-centered um, systems that don't really need much fooling around with. Um, they don't quite have the same exact uh, adjustment. They're both stepless adjustment mechanisms, but they don't quite translate to each other. So two full turns from the burrs being zeroed out on the air grind winds up being a little bit finer than two full turns uh, on the Feld grind, or the Feld 2 rather. So they're not quite equivalent, but they do have the overall the, a, a fairly similar grind range. The air grind seems to be a little bit less than the Feld 2 does. Um, you still get a pretty wide range out of them from espresso to quite coarse drip coffee. Um, and of course, capacity is a little bit of a concern there as well, um, with the air grind holding about 25 grams of coffee in the hopper. The Feld 2 can hold up to 30. We've squeezed in maybe 35 before. It kind of depends on how dense your beans are. The uh, grind catches, of course, are also differently sized and the air grind only holds about 25 or so on its own. The Feld 2 can hold a little bit more up to about 40 grams in our experience. And that depends on how fine you're grinding. Uh, weight wise, the air grind is a really, really compelling travel grinder because it only weighs 14 ounces. Um, so it comes in under a pound. It's very lightweight and compact. Um, the aluminum body really helps with that in terms of weight reduction. The Feld 2 is a little bit more heavy. It's about 24 ounces, um, so not quite twice as, uh, twice as heavy. It's still, you know, it's a little bit heavier, a little bit bulkier. And um, packing the Feld 2 is a little bit difficult because this uh, integrated cap and handle all, is all one piece. So it's you know a little bit clumsy in terms of figuring out a way to pack that together, um, unless you're comfortable just packing it with the handle uh, attached. Grinding uh, adjustment with these is both uh, on both is quite easy. Um, often people will use uh, the zero point where the burrs are sort of touching and won't really compress any further as their main reference point, and then both of the dials have great easy to see numbers. Uh, and adjusting is usually as easy as holding the dial and turning the handle. On the air grind, you can see we have this little cutout notch with a, a reference point to see which number and which dot you're, um, uh, you're selecting. On the Feld 2, we just have this arrow built right into the cap on the adjustment knob so you can turn it and see which, uh, which number you're referencing. Um, so again, these are both stepless grinders, which means you have technically sort of infinite uh, adjustment. You can find yourself between whole numbers quite frequently, but small adjustments, especially for espresso, you know, you're more or less just making them relative to your last shot. So it's not super important to know, you know, which, you know, decimal of a whole number you're in between. Overall, these are both great quality grinders. The, the burrs themselves produce a pretty excellent um, quality drip grind in our experience, and they do a fairly good job of, of espresso as well. Um, 
In terms of grinding for espresso, it's a little bit laborious, especially with the air grind. You know, this short handle doesn't give you quite as much uh, leverage as the, the longer one on the Feld 2 does. Uh, and the smaller burr set uh, in, uh, comparison, in comparison to some of the other hand grinders that we have means that they're just doing a little bit more work. It, it, it takes a little bit more effort to grind for espresso. So they're workable for espresso. The shot quality is pretty good. You probably enjoy the flavor, but um, in terms of actually ease of use, they're not quite our favorite espresso grinders, even though they are capable. Um, for something like a V60 brew, um, I have this set up at about uh, maybe 2.2 turns from zero, which I, I find is a pretty uh, fine um, drip grind. Loading these also is not quite the easiest thing. They have a smaller diameter and not a ton of room to pour the beans in. So sometimes you have to be a little bit careful or uh, I find I actually sort of cup my hand around the top sometimes to pour beans in and just let them kind of bounce off my fingers. Um, so I just have 15 grams of beans here. I'm going to show you what it's like to grind for approximately a V60 grind. Again, the shorter handle on the air grind is, you know, it's not quite as nice as some other grinders. I feel like the air grind uh, sort of requires the most effort out of all the premium hand grinders that we carry just because smaller burst set, smaller handle means you're kind of translating a lot more of your, uh, your own muscle work to the beans. But still, grinding 15 grams of coffee in about 20 seconds or so is not bad at all. And we have a pretty good quality grind. Um, on the finer side of things, that grind quality really, really shines. Um, both the Feld 2 and the Air Grind do a great job with that finer range. Again, we're not, it's not quite our favorite espresso grinder, but the grind quality itself at the finer range is, is pretty good. Um, it does get a little bit sloppy and chunky when you go very coarse, but anywhere in that drip range to just a, a bit coarser than espresso is quite good. That's sort of our favorite way to use these grinders. Um, overall, fairly good quality, really impressive stuff from Knock, and it's easy to see why so many people like these grinders. Um, probably the only downside is that um, Sometimes, uh, you know, certain parts don't fit quite as, uh, as nicely as they had previously. We've had some issues with the air grind handles not fitting quite right before, but um, Knock has been very attentive to uh, some of these customer concerns and they've done a lot of revisions uh, over the years, um, including replacing the formerly plastic lid on the air grind with an all metal one. That's kind of a nice update to that grinder. Um, overall, you really can't go wrong with an air grind if you need something compact for travel with really excellent uh, grind quality. Um, the Feld 2 is harder to find these days, but um, if you're interested in uh, kind of wondering how they stack up, the air grind really, it grinds and performs just as well as the Feld 2 does. Um, again, just you don't quite have quite as much leverage on that handle and you have a smaller capacity. So this is the Helor 101. Uh, this is actually my personal favorite grinder of the group that we're talking about. Um, it is another uh, aluminum bodied hand grinder. Um, it holds about 30 to 40 grams of beans in the hopper as well as on the grind sketch. And again, that depends on how coarsely you're grinding. Um, it has 38 millimeter steel burrs. And in fact, it comes with two sets. So we actually have um, one set that's a little bit better for espresso, it can still grind coarser, we just feel the flavor is best in espresso, and one that's a little bit better in performing for brewed coffee. So we wanted to give you two, uh, two burr sets so you can switch basically as needed. Um, it's fairly easy to switch out, uh, the grinder comes with all the tools that you need. You just sort of um, take out the adjustment from the bottom and there's a couple of screws, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, this grinder, I like it a lot because for me, it fits my hand uh, and you know, just overall the weight feels really good. Um, it may not be quite the same case for you, but uh, again, this often just comes down to personal preferences. This one feels the best to me. Um, again, we have that milled uh, aluminum body. Uh, we have a pretty generous and uh, comfortable 30 to 40 gram capacity. Grinding is very smooth. We have uh, a couple of bearings and very well stabilized grind shaft like uh, some of the other grinders here. Um, and the grind adjustment itself is 
uh, a stepless dial, uh, which you find on the bottom of the burr here. So uh, we have some reference marks along the cone burr. They're basically just circles, and then one is filled in to represent the zero point. Um, and then you just sort of twist this dial uh, with the handle in place. You can twist the dial to make your adjustments. And there's another dot on the dial itself to sort of align your, you know, align with the cone burr dots, you know, to make sure that you're hitting your desired reference point. Um, using this grinder for espresso is totally possible. Uh, again, we have a, a burr set that is designed for that. Um, it is, a, it's a little tough once you get to those finer grind settings. Um, but it's definitely workable and that uh, specific burr set is actually really well tuned for grinding for espresso. It seems to work at it a little bit uh, easier um, in terms of how much effort is needed to, to actually grind. Um, we find that, um, so in terms of starting from zero with the burrs touching, um, within maybe uh, three quarters of a turn to one and a half turns is around that espresso range. And for something like a V60, like a smaller, uh, smaller manual pour over, you're looking at more like three full turns. Um, and yeah, you know, you'll probably uh, adjust from there to find what settings work best for you and your recipes and your coffees. Um, so I, I like, you know, three full turns as a starting point when I'm making a single cup V60. So to show you what that's like, I have it set up right about that setting and I have the brewed coffee burrs installed in this right now. So I have 15 grams of beans. Um, we have this nice little uh, hex shaft that fits into the slot on the handle itself. Um, like the Feld 2, we have basically an all one piece handle cap design. So this isn't necessarily the easiest thing to pack down unless you have uh, the ability to leave the, the handle attached to the grinder. But grinding, one of the things that I love about this grinder is that even for a fairly fine drip setting, it is so, so easy. You've got a nice long handle that gives you a lot of leverage. Um, the burrs aren't the biggest, but you still have a pretty nice and easy amount of effort needed to grind through, uh, you know, 15 to 20 grams of coffee you know, is certainly gonna be under 30 seconds, typically. Um, overall, like I said, I, I like this one uh, the best out of the bunch um, in terms of it fits my hands really well. I find it very comfortable to use. Uh, it does a great job in terms of grind quality and flavor. Um, and I like the option of having those two burr sets. So I've got a really great, you know, single cup V60 grind here. It's that sort of uh, coarse, sandy, um, but still sort of fine side of, of drip. Um, and it didn't take very long or very much effort to get there at all. Um, overall, Healer 101, I think, um, is a really excellent quality intro to, or intro to the hand grinder market. Um, and it comes with a, a nice accessory pack as well. It, it has this like thick felt carry case where you can store all of the parts that you need. So that's really great for travel. You can just pack your grinder away into this bag, throw in some beans, um, and throw it into your carry-on or whatever you are traveling with. So that's, that's a really nice addition to have. Uh, with any of these hand grinders. All right, now we're moving on to the Commandante C40 Mark III. That's a mouthful, huh? Uh, the Commandante or the C40 um, is probably one of the best looking grinders in our lineup. You know, it's got this really nice wood veneer and wood handle. Um, it looks just really striking and beautiful. Um, and it is a really well-made hand grinder as well. Um, we have a few things that we wish were a little bit different with it, but overall, the grind quality, the performance, the flavors in the cup are all really, they're excellent and on par with the majority of the grinders that we do carry. Um, so looking at this grinder, we obviously have this wood veneer on the outside. The inner casing itself is actually steel. Um, inside the grinder, we have uh, plastic supports for the steel grind mechanisms. Um, the burrs themselves are 39 millimeter conical steel burrs, and the grind adjustment is uh, sort of a, a clicky uh, stepped mechanism. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out what settings you need to use. Um, there aren't very good reference points, but you can count the clicks from zero, or you can basically just choose one of the three pegs of the adjustment knob and just kind of use that as your counting revolutions around the dial. 
for a V60, uh, today I'm gonna use about two revolutions from zero. Um, for espresso, uh, I might use somewhere between a half revolution to one and a half revolutions. Um, and going coarser from there, obviously, you know, it just kind of depends on what you're brewing and how coarse you need to grind. Um, it can go up pretty coarse uh, in terms of its overall grind range. So um, it's capable of doing espresso to coarse drip for, er, for sure. Now, in addition to this grind or er, uh, adjustment mechanism that we have built into the C40, uh, Comandante also has what they call a red clicks system, which replaces um, the adjustment mechanism in here with a finer adjustment. So that would change uh, how many clicks or how many revolutions uh, you use for your different grind settings. And basically that's designed to give you a little bit more resolution in those espresso settings. Um, so it can perform for espresso, but sometimes that big click on the, the stock adjustment mechanism means that you don't quite have as much uh, control over dialing in as you might want. In general, it, well, we haven't found that to be a big problem, but occasionally, especially with lighter coffees where you do want a little bit more um, fine tune control, we've hit snags where it's like, oh, well, one is too fine and one is too coarse and we have to play around with dose instead. Um, overall, still a very serviceable grinder. Um, the hopper itself holds about 30 to 40 grams of coffee. Um, and, you know, that's a pretty generous amount, or I'm sorry, 40 to 45 grams of coffee, which is a pretty generous amount of, of beans to hold. Um, most people are going to be using less uh, just because most people are using hand grinders for single cup purposes, but should you need larger batches, you know, you want to brew a big Chemex for your friends, um, you certainly can. Um, the main downsides we feel about the Comandante are those plastic parts internally, um, especially given the price, it's a little unfortunate to see that, but, you know, in terms of practical day-to-day -day use, they don't seem to have any trouble. It's just that in the long term, they might, you know, start to go brittle and crack on you. So. Um, it doesn't seem like it has quite the longevity that other hand grinders do. Um, also, the glass grinds catch is um, really not that travel friendly, unfortunately. Um, it, you know, it's a, it's a design choice. It really looks and feels nice as a grinder, but you maybe wouldn't want to throw this in your backpack for a weekend trip um, just because that glass could break, unfortunately. Um, overall though, you know, those are very small downsides. This is a very nice and well-made hand grinder. Um, we just feel that some of the materials hopefully could be improved with another revision of the grinder. Um, really not much bad to say about, about a hand grinder when you're saying that, yeah, there's a little bit of plastic in it. Um, it is a, a very well-made product and the grind quality um, and especially the, the grind output, the flavor is really excellent. Um, in terms of actual speed of grinding, again, I'm just gonna do that 15 gram V60 test for you. Uh, it does make pretty short work of a V60 dose. Really, really smooth grinding. Um, also, relatively quiet. It's not the loudest hand grinder of the bunch. Uh, it certainly, uh, you know, it has a little bit of a different sound because the casing is a little bit thinner with that steel wall and thin wood veneer. But uh, overall, you know, it could do worse. And uh, again, that just the speed and the smoothness of grinding is up there with the best of them. Um, it has uh, also this very nice big wood palmer, a pommel, which is super comfortable if you have larger hands. Um, it is really nice to grab onto and um, again, just, uh, overall very, very high build quality. Um, unscrewing that grinds catch, we can see that my V60 grind is nice and even, really, really good grind quality out of that. Um, this is one of our favorite grinders, hand grinders for brewed coffee. The, the flavor quality is excellent. Um, in the espresso range, we also quite enjoy it as well. Um, it's just, again, sometimes you have a little bit of difficulty with the um, resolution of adjusting your grind when you're trying to dial in your shots. Overall, still a very excellent premium hand grinder. Finally, we get to Kinu's line of grinders. We have the M47, the M47 Phoenix, and the M47 Traveler. Um, the M47 is their original hand grinder product. Um, it is a heck of a hand grinder. This thing is heavy. It is all steel construction. It weighs almost two and a half pounds. Uh, it, is, it is dense, but it is very well built. It is so smooth to use. 
Um, there's a lot of precision craftsmanship that went into this. Uh, even something as simple as the adjustment dial on all of these is micro-stepped. There's 10 numbers on the dial itself with five divisions. So there's 50 clicks uh, per revolution. And each one of those translates to one one hundredth of a millimeter of burr travel. So you have very, very precise uh, grind adjustment and, you know, Kinu, to their credit, has figured out a way to make their uh, their grinder burrs zero out on, at zero on the dial, which is like, it's a small thing, but it, it's actually pretty nice to see. Um, so each one of these grinders has 47 millimeter conical steel burrs in them, uh, and they are all coated in uh, just a black coating that, uh, like the black coating on the Feld uh, 2 and Knox grinders, um, basically is there to uh, increase the longevity. They will stay sharper for longer, so you don't have to replace them as often. They'll, you know, basically get a few extra hundred pounds out of them in their life uh, in their lifespan. Um, we have steel shafts in all of these for grinding. The uh, adjustment mechanisms are steel as well. And overall, the difference between the three is capacity and build materials. So the original M47 is an all steel grinder. Pretty much. There's some plastic here you can see, but most these are basically just sort of adornments. Um, the body is steel. The supports in the middle are steel. Um, the catch cup itself is mostly steel. There's some plastic in there as well, as well as some magnets that allow the catch cup to just magnetically stick to the ring burr. Um, overall, just a really, really solid grinder. That weight is a little bit uh, foreboding, though. Like, it's... It's kind of hard to imagine throwing this comfortably into a backpack um, and even putting it in luggage. Like that's, that's a kind of a bulky item to take with you. Maybe not the most travel friendly grinder, but you definitely know that it's not going to get hurt if it you know, is in your backpack and you toss it on the ground. Um, very, very solid build. Um, one thing that you might love or hate is the thumb rest on this grinder. Um, I personally don't find it comfortable at all to grind with this against my thumb. So what I do is I tuck it kind of into the crook of one finger and it's much more comfortable for me to use that way. That probably depends on your hand size and you know, your, your finger length and all that. Um, we have heard some people just don't like that at all and they'll grab the, the grinder down here. Um, kind of up to you again. Uh, basically this is a very hardy, very sturdy, very precise grinder uh, whose main downside is just the overall weight and bulk. Um, now the Phoenix is a sort of a correction to that. It was built mostly out of necessity um, in that Kinu had a uh, factory fire that destroyed, well, some of their equipment and stock and things. So they created the Phoenix to kind of at least have a stock of something in the meantime while they're repairing their facilities. Um, the Phoenix itself is basically designed to mirror the original M47, but it includes plastic parts and an aluminum body instead. So um, overall, the, the weight is reduced greatly. We're down to about a pound and a half. Um, and we've actually improved the capacity where the uh, M47 original would hold about 30 to 40 grams in the hopper. We're now seeing 45 to almost 50 grams, depending on the beans, uh, in the hopper on the Phoenix. Still, we have the same uh, adjustment mechanism, we have the same burrs, we have the same grind quality. Um, we haven't really seen any reduction in uh, stability or in uh, precision or really in anything. Like, Kinu did a great job uh, changing the materials and the build of a grinder while maintaining all of its best features. So uh, again, overall, we still have the same grind quality with a great reduction in weight. It's a little bit more fragile though. Um, you know, ABS plastic is, um, not as robust as steel will be. So uh, while this is more travel friendly, it might be a little uh, more prone to some damage happening if it's treated um, or handled uh, a little bit roughly. Um, still overall, uh, all the important bits, the grind, uh, the grind shaft, the grind adjustment, the burrs themselves are all the same. So you're getting the same performance uh, out of the Phoenix as you would out of the original M47. Uh, finally, we have the M47 Traveler. Um, this was kind of an intermediary step between the M47 and the Phoenix. It was designed to be a more compact, travel-friendly grinder. We have an aluminum body, and we still have steel cross braces uh, on the inside. So while this is actually lighter than the Phoenix, uh, it's mainly just because of its overall reduced stature and size. 
Um, we have about a 25 to 30 gram capacity in the hopper here. We have this modified thumb rest, which I personally find more comfortable to use than the original. Um, but again, that is really up to hand size and your own preference for how you wanna hold onto a grinder. Um, the uh, plastic grind catch slides in and locks in with a little O-ring into the aluminum body. And again, same burrs, same grind adjustment, same grind performance. All three of these we feel are really excellent um, compact manual espresso grinders. They start to, in our, in our opinion, get a little bit, I would say muddy uh, in the drip range, which isn't to say that they are bad drip grinders at all. And when I say muddy, I just mean that they don't really quite have the same flavor clarity as something like the Commandante does. Um, and I would just chalk that up to the burr set being used. They are very, very good at fine grinding. Um, espresso shots off of Phoenix are honestly like, just like top notch. They are uh, about as good as any espresso I've had off a Barazza grinder, to be honest. Um, and uh, you really can't go wrong choosing one of these for uh, espresso and drip purposes. It's just that once you get into those coarser ranges, if you're brewing for a Chemex or something and you are taking it toward the, the coarser drip range, yeah, I think you lose a little bit of flavor clarity. Um, really nothing to complain about. It's only when you're testing them head to head that you really find these differences. Totally acceptable uh, flavor quality in terms of, you know, just on its own in a vacuum. But once you're kind of looking at them, uh, I would say that, you know, we found that, yeah, you know, the, the drip range is not where these grinders excel when compared to the rest of the crowd. Um, overall, we love Kinu's products. These are very, very well built. Um, you are definitely getting a lot of value for your money when you buy a Kinu hand grinder. Um, and uh, really, uh, you know, you can kind of just pick which model suits your needs the best at this point. Um, the M47, again, is that big, bulky, um, all-steel grinder that'll probably last a couple of lifetimes. But if you want something a little bit more travel-friendly, you could go with the Traveler or the Phoenix. Um, taking a look at grind speed, um, I have this Phoenix set up with the adjustment at about four full revolutions from full zero, which is a good starting point for a fine drip. Um, and I'm going to grind about 15 grams of coffee. Uh, grinding with a Kinu is so, so smooth. And uh, you have these larger burrs and pretty long handles that give you good leverage. So it doesn't take much effort at all to grind through a 15 gram dose uh, at a V60 setting. It's, it's really, really smooth. It's really easy. Um, Again, overall, we, we think that you know the, the best sort of use for these grinders is in the, the espresso to fine drip range. And espresso settings are gonna be closer to maybe uh, two to three and a half revolutions from zero. And you're gonna get really excellent shots. And for a hand grinder, those really fine adjustments on that dial, uh, you know, each of those little clicks being a very precise one one hundredth of a millimeter means that you can go two or three clicks uh, when dialing in your espresso and you're gonna get a very, very small adjustment to flow rate and flavor. And it's really, really awesome. You know, I, I love using these grinders for espresso. You know, if I get a fancy bag of coffee, I almost wanna use uh, an M47 Phoenix instead of an electric grinder because I know that there's gonna be more retention on that electric and I wanna savor that coffee. So I'm gonna get exactly my dose back out with a hand grinder and an M47 is gonna do a really great job with giving me awesome flavor in the cup. So our grind quality on these grinders is just top notch. We've got really smooth, very uh, visibly even um, grinds for this V60 setting. And obviously it did not take an excessive amount of effort to grind that. So Kinu's grinders are definitely, you know, if, if you want a high quality product, we can't recommend them enough. All right, so there you have it. That is our whole premium hand grinder lineup right now. Um, we hope that this video has helped you kind of understand how they all compare to each other. Again, you know, we really feel that they're all very much on a fairly level playing field. Yeah, they might have a strength or a weakness here in terms of uh, what they're best for grinding for, but overall, all of these options are perfect for somebody looking for that, you know, really good, solid, uh, home grinding experience. Um, ideally, 
Having this comparison helps you, uh, you know, figure out which one is the best for your needs. You know, whether you're looking for something that's great for espresso or for drip coffee or somewhere in between or all of the above. Um, ideally, you know, we are able to help you make that decision. And if you have any further questions or you just need some help deciding, we're here for you. Reach out to our sales team and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more content like this, we've got all kinds of product overviews, comparisons, recipes, events coverage, and more. Feel free to subscribe, like, share this video, and let us know what you think in the comments.